Hey Vinyl Community, what's up? It's Robert Fithin and today I want to talk about the discography of ZZ Top. Now you've probably heard that unfortunately bassist Dusty Hill passed away a couple of days ago. I don't want to get too much into that because I don't know really when you're watching this video. So let's just get right to the music. We start off with ZZ Top's first album called ZZ Top's First Album. Now you know these guys gotta be a little bit badass to come right out of the gate and call their thing ZZ Top's First Album like they just knew they're gonna be around for decades and this is only the first. Now, of course, Billy Gibbons was in that uh, Moving Sidewalks kind of underground psychedelic band. But this is the first time that uh, these guys have been together, called themselves ZZ Top. And uh, this is the album. Starts off with a song called Somebody Else Been Shaking Your Tree. Great way to start off with ZZ Top's very first album. Basic boogie rock throughout. Nothing groundbreaking here, nothing earth shattering, but a trio that know exactly what they're doing and already are kind of having their own kind of sound, especially that that signature ZZ Top vocal sound. Also on here, a song called Brown Sugar. It's not the Rolling Stones song, but it is about the same thing, and we're definitely not talking about cookie ingredients here. A lot of great music on here. You've got Neighbor Neighbor, a Backdoor Love Affair, which shows up later on their first uh, compilation. So great introduction to, to ZZ Top. ZZ Top's first album coming out in uh, January of 1971. So it's got that 70s uh, rock production that I love so much on there, where everything is nice and clear. You can hear what everybody's doing individually but it still all comes together. Some nice stereo separation going on in these. So uh, ZZ Top's first album leads up to Rio Grande Mud. Uh, one of the first of many ZZ Top album titles that will feature some sort of Mexican or Spanish uh, reference, Rio Grande Mud. A little more rockin' than their first one, a little more fully realized sounding. It's got basically a fuller sound, a richer sound, and uh, it doesn't sound quite as debut out of the gate kind of raw as the first one but it's still got that raw Tex-Mex ZZ Top sound it just sounds a little even more like ZZ Top uh, than the first one and uh, Francine is on here excellent little boogie rock song as long as you don't pay too close attention to the lyrics just got paid today now I got a pocket full of change always love that line uh, you got Chevrolet on here a great commercial for Chevrolet but actually it is a rock and little tune and a great ballad called Sure Got Cold After the Rain Fell a little seven seven and a half minute long ZZ Top ballad which you don't get too often on the, on a lot of the ZZ Top uh, records. Uh, produced by Bill Ham, I should mention that he produced pretty much all the ZZ Top, with the exception of a couple. Uh, he had the same, they had the same producer throughout pretty much their entire career, even though they do pretty much change up their sound, as you probably know a little bit later on. Up to the third album now, this is Trace Hombres, and uh, yeah, lovely gatefold there. Whenever you got one of those threads going on about showing an album with food on it, here's one where a lot of food but it's all hidden in the gatefold. This is kind of where ZZ Top came a, became a little more popular worldwide, not just in the Tex-Mex, you know, uh, that southern kind of sound, but uh, with the song LaGrange, all about the best little whorehouse, Texas. So yeah, LaGrange is on here, and there's so many great other songs on here. A waiting, on, waiting for the Buzz, Jesus Just Left Chicago, that medley sets it off. They've done that song in concert for years. Uh, Hot Blue and Righteous, Slowing Things Down, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. Another great one on here, uh, Moving On Down the Line kicks off side two. Slowing things down for Have You Heard, kind of a more of a gospel sound uh, for ZZ Top, which, again, you don't hear a lot of. That's the thing about these albums is there's little sounds on here, and they try little techniques, and it really only shows up in, like, one album on one song. So you get a little gospel uh, ZZ, Top, ZZ Top here to finish off uh, Trey's Ombre. It's got the uh, custom, uh, yeah, custom inner sleeve here, too. So they're officially good enough. Uh, to have one of those, and of course, uh, London uh, Records is uh, what ZZ Top is on at this point. Moving on to album number four, this is Fandango. This is kind of a hybrid album, coming out in 1975. Uh, a little, uh, one side is live, the other side is studio tracks. I love the live side, it's great. But uh, has, uh, you know, uh, the, the backdoor uh, Love Affair medley on there, which kind of uh, has the, from the first album and kind of elongates that into Jailhouse Rock and all this stuff. Starts off with, have you heard, what's the word? Thunderbird. And uh, that's a fun one. But I love side two. The studio part of this is incredible. You get uh, Nasty Dogs of Funky Kings. You get Balinese. You get Mexican Blackbird. I think Balinese was on the, uh, they, they used that in Dazed and Confused. They used Mexican Blackbird in, uh, uh, what was that? Was that from here? From Dusk Till Dawn soundtrack, maybe something like that? I was in there, heard it on the X, another classic ZZ top, top song that still was holding up in concert these days and uh, stopping the whole thing, ending it all with Tush, the, uh, the song that really put these guys on the map. And uh, well, when you write a song about that, you just 
keep it two minutes and 14 seconds short simple to the point i mean they're not even going for double entendres on that one they're just laying it right out there just looking for some tush on fandango again great album one side live uh, one side studio i don't know if this had a custom uh, interstate probably did i don't have it though but this one they they're good enough to have a custom label for fandango so uh zz tops uh fourth album so we're up to 1976 now. These guys have been doing the boogie rock thing, getting a little more innovative with each album, getting a little more popular. Now they're worldwide known. The eyes are on them. What are they going to do next? They're going to do Tejas next. At least I think that's how you pronounce this. Tejas? I don't think it's Tejas, is it? It. Uh, I thought it was a Spanish or, or, or a different way of saying Texas, but then I found out later it actually means friends. But anyway, ZZ Top's 1976 album, uh, Trifold this time. See, they're getting fancier with every album, too. That's a great trifold, uh, spotlighting uh, each one of them. Before, you can, you can tell here, that they're starting to grow. They've got the beards, but they don't have the, the ZZ Top beards yet. And the other side is, uh, you know, just this double and then this, uh, this photo here. All right, it's 1976. Release number five. Tricky to take the record out of these. But the sound kind of changes a little bit here. They're trying some different... Oh, wait, I'm also, that's... That's convenient. Comes out of the top. Comes out of the ZZ top. Okay. Uh, great inner sleeve. It's a harder inner sleeve. So you might want to just ditch this and go for the, uh, you know, the poly lined, which I did not do. And you can see there the, <laughs> the result of that. Another custom label. But uh, this, they kind of change their sound a little bit on this. Um, they try some different things. Some of it works. Some of it doesn't. You can tell they're trying to innovate. They're, they're, they're toying around with the synth sound yet. They don't quite have it down yet. But it pops up on a couple of tracks. I heard their synth sound was kind of inspired by uh, uh, equal parts Devo and orchestral maneuvers in the dark. So I don't know if that's true. But um, this is a different kind of album. I would suggest for a different kind of listen, if you've never heard it before, try listening to Side 2 first. And I think that's a better listening experience. You get things like $10 Man, which absolutely rocks. Uh, you get uh, a little bit of a different tone, guitar tone, almost like a grunge tone for them early on. I don't know, it's 1976, but Pan Am Highway Blues, check that out. Uh, arrested for Driving While Blind is kind of fun. Uh, well, the song is fun, not, not being arrested for driving while blind. Uh, just a lot of great stuff on here. Sleep in the Desert, uh, kind of a ballad, just kind of drifts off, and you drift off as well to end the whole thing. But of course, if you're listening to side two first, I guess then you're only halfway through. Tejas from uh, ZZ Top. Uh, if you don't have any ZZ Top albums, I wouldn't necessarily start here. But this is a good one to make like your, you know, like your fourth or fifth or sixth album down the road that you get. You want to get this one. Uh, Tejas from ZZ Top. What are we up to? 70. So we got 77, 78, 79. We got to go to CDs. And uh, De Guelo which I think means, like, to the death, right? De Guelo from ZZ Top. These guys took, like, what, three years off and came back on a new label, uh, Warner Brothers. Still got the same producer, though, Bill Ham. And not a lot of artwork going on in here. A lot of, I don't see a single picture of these guys. No photo of ZZ Top anywhere on here. But some great music, though. They do the cover of uh, Sam and Dave's I Thank You. I'm Bad, I'm Nationwide as a part of this. And of course, uh, those are great hits, as well as their big song on here, Cheap Sunglasses, is on here as well. As some great album tracks. You've got their uh, their cover of Robert Johnson's Dust My Broom. Uh, you've got Manic Mechanic, which is kind of showing ZZ Top's uh, more of their sense of humor side. Uh, starts to pop out in here. But this is a more enriched sound. It started. They're starting to sound more of like a full-on classic rock band, or what would become classic rock. It wasn't obviously classic rock at the time. But they're getting away from that simple little three-piece boogie rock band, and they're starting to add in more texture to their music here. It's starting to sound a lot fuller. They're going to enter the 80s with this, and you can see it's going to get more and more uh, unique. El Loco is next. Uh, the Crazy ZZ Top, and this is from 1981. This is the one with pearl necklace on it. This is the one with two snake boogie on it. So now they're full on into, let's see, the Whorehouse song worked, the Tush song worked, Let's just make a bunch of double entendre songs. So yeah, Pearl Necklace and uh, a Tube Snake Boogie, the two big songs up here. But again, it's a ZZ Top uh, album, so there's all kinds of great songs in here. Party on the Patio, we used to play all the time. That kind of got forgotten about a little bit. Uh, groovy Little Hippie Pad is kind of like a groovy, kind of different sound for them. Like I was saying, each ZZ Top release 
seems to have one or two songs that have some kind of a different sound for them. And Groovy Little Hippie Pad is the one on here. Uh, Layla's a cool song. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff on here. Uh, I wouldn't make this, again, my first or second or third ZZ Top purchase. But down the line, you got to get uh, El Loco at one point from uh, 1981. I forgot what were we on here. This is their sixth, re seventh release, something like that. So they're full on superstars. Now, as you can tell, because uh, they, they're on the cover of this one, they have the beards that are kind of starting now. They're kind of to here. You know, they don't have the car yet, but they got the beards. 1981. You know what? I think it's time they got the car. Eliminator. Now, this is where ZZ Top went from being a rock band that people knew about and loved. Songs like LaGrange and Tush, Tube Steak Boogie, to a, a worldwide pop phenomenon. This is how I was introduced to ZZ Top. Uh, I'd heard of the song Tush and LaGrange, but I didn't really know who it was or whatever. I was uh, 10 years old, summer of uh, 83. So um, this is how I was introduced to ZZ Top. Um, so this is kind of like my debut ZZ Top uh, uh, experience. And uh, just loaded with, obviously, you know, one after the other. Give Me All Your Lovin', Got Me Under Pressure, Sharp Dressed Man, Legs is also on here in its original album version. And a song called TV Dinners that I remember there was a big video for, but um, I never was, like, played on the radio very much or wasn't a single or anything, but there was always this TV Dinners video on. Uh, gotta love that sleep, but yeah. You get that uh, Ford Coupe there, man, the, the Eliminator. You had all of this together at the same time. You had ZZ Top changing their sound up to more of a synth kind of sound, which I usually don't like. But again, I was introduced to this at 10 years old, so it was I wasn't as cynical then. So I like the sound, but I can imagine a long-term ZZ Top fan hearing this and going, what the hell? But again, I was 10, so I loved it. Uh, the Eliminator car, the videos with the running theme on all of them. I thought the Legs video was the greatest video of all time. Um, so, yeah, this I used to li I had this on cassette, actually, and I uh, used to listen to this all the time. I know every song on here over and over again. I got the six. Give me your nine. You got to have some ZZ Top double entendres going on again. Uh, Dirty Dog, Bad Girl, Thug. Thug's kind of a funky, you know, bass kind of, uh, you know, like a slap bass kind of thing. But yeah, this is where the fun starts as far as the videos and the whole concept of ZZ Top is now just not some three-piece boogie band from Texas. They are a full-on, you know, they are a full-on uh, brand, basically. They've got a car. They've got a look. They've got, uh, you know, videos. And they got this incredible Eliminator album to support all of it on. Now, for vinyl collectors, uh, there's actually a copy of this that has the uh, back cover with a completely different photo. The guys are all standing around the Eliminator car. I think it looks much better than this. And there's only one pressing of that. So that's kind of a collectible thing if you can uh, find it. But yeah, ZZ Top Eliminator, this is where these guys broke through. And it was my introduction to uh, ZZ Top. Their fuzz guitar mixed with the kind of the drum, drum track kind of sound, which again, I usually don't like, but I was 10. And so uh, it was definitely a, a, an exciting sound, and uh, I loved everything about this album and this band at this time, to the point where my next purchase was uh, the best of ZZ Top, which is this compilation that was originally released in 1977. Now, I didn't get it until, like I said, 1983 or 84, and then I was blown away by the different sound of this, but I love this just as much with the songs I was talking about before, like Tush and LaGrange, Just Got Paid, Francine, Waiting for the Bus, Jesus Just Left Chicago, that whole medley, Heard It on the X, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, it's all a part of this. Kind of short, because it's, you know, the shorter, the kind of short songs anyway, and there's only 10 of them for a best of, but a great introduction as far as I was concerned to the early work of uh, ZZ Top right after discovering them as a 10-year-old uh, with Eliminator. So yeah, the best of ZZ Top. If you can still find this vinyl, um, it's a great listen. It really is all the way through it. Like I said, kind of short, but you can probably find this for like a dollar or two. I liked it so much, I eventually uh, got the CD, The Best of ZZ Top, 1977. Okay, now we are up to uh, the follow-up to Eliminator, and I got this like right when it was out, ZZ Top Afterburner. I actually got this, uh, started up with this on a cassette, and for cassette collectors, you might be interested to know that this is when Warner Brothers changed their spine of their cassettes when this was released from their black and white bold text to the new white and red thin text. So I know that everybody at, uh, had to know that. But this is where ZZ Top continues, where Eliminator left off with the image, with the music, everything about this. This is like Eliminator Part 2, basically. This has Sleeping Bag, or no, this doesn't have, yeah, Sleeping Bag is on here. Stages is on here, which is one of my favorite 
ZZ Top uh, kind of 80s song. I've always loved that song. It's kind of been like pushed to the side a little bit, but always love stages. Rough Boy is the ballad on here for the ladies. Let's face it, that's what it was for. Woke Up With Wood is on here. Uh, is a Can't Stop Rocking, Can't Stop Rocking on here. And I believe the first sing or second single was Velcro Fly, which again is where they start getting kind of just real silly. You know, and, and effects in their song, like swoosh effects and things like that. So it was a little too silly for me at the time. And again, at this point, I think I'm only like 12 or 13 years old. And I'm like, Velcro fly. Yikes. But yeah, the rest of this sounds uh, okay. I mean, it's not as good as Eliminator, but it has stages on it. And uh, like I said, I always love stages. Are the guys on here somewhere besides... Uh... No, they're just in the sky. They're just in the sky. Eventually, someday, I will find an old 80s uh, vinyl of this. And get it but i just hadn't like, got around to it okay we're up to a bad part now brace yourselves it's gonna get gonna get kind of rough the zz top six pack this came out in 1987 this is the way that their first uh what first five albums and then they skipped over to guelo and then el loco was released on cd they took off the drum tracks and replaced them with drum machine loops they put a bunch of 80s sounding reverb on there and this whole thing which was pretty expensive at the time i mean it's all six albums on a, on a three cds big booklet um yikes this sounds awful uh big price and terrible i mean i was uh, oh my god <laughs> this is awful uh and not what i wanted at all i wanted the sound of the albums i love the drums the drums the 70s drums sound so clear it's like you're sitting right next to the drum set gone on here this is like the fuck frank beard mixes of zz top's first five albums and el loco hated this then hate it now wish this didn't exist don't know whose idea this was but why in the world you would do that i don't know and then when they released the individual cds you got to watch out for this too they put those drum track mixes on there so if you get older cds of like you know the first album or uh, rio grand mud or your fandango or any of those they're going to have these awful 80s remixes um they didn't correct the problem until years later and you can get like you know new copies with the clear spine and bonus tracks of things like Trey's Ombres and Fandango with thankfully the original LP masters back on here. They realized what a mistake they made. Well, that just came apart. They realized what kind of mistake they made and they corrected that. But those those uh god awful 80s remix CDs are still out there and of course the uh, ZZ's uh, ZZ Top 6 pack is out there as where if you see this somewhere for a dollar three cds six albums for a dollar pass it up pass it up it's not worth it i hate that release my god to give you an idea tush you know um or, or lagrange take lagrange for instance where it, it goes into the uh the, just the guitar part do 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 and then gets and then the drums kick in and i love drums um the drums kick in like that okay that's the original this shit is like that's kind of the different sound i don't want to hear fucking miami vice drums on a 1974 album from zz top it's ridiculous have i have i explained enough my hatred for the zz top six pack and the re-releases let's just just smoke it let's move on okay recycler i still have this on cd i still love this cd i just think that cd is the way to go with this because it's from 1991 i don't know if bill ham's wife was murdered while this was being produced or after or whatever but what a horrible thing for him to experience while trying to make his easy top album but recycler is kind of like less of that uh drum loop um you know uh, synthesizer type sound keyboard sound that was on um afterburner this is more of a return to a little more, not not all the way, but a, a sort of a return to like the blues rock uh, sound that they had earlier. My Head's in Mississippi, huge song. Double Back from uh, Back to the Future Part 2 or Part 3 uh, on here. Concrete and Steel, uh, the song that sets it off. That was kind of a rock hit. But yeah, it's your basic, you're getting basic ZZ Top albums at this point. This is where those basic ones start, where it's just like, you know what to expect. You know you're going to have some boogie rock. You know you're going to have them try a couple new sounds. You know, you kind of know what to expect. They start getting a little little formulatic there uh, with uh, Recycler. But it's still an okay album. It just doesn't shine as bright as Afterburner and definitely not as exciting as uh, Eliminator. 
ZZ Top Greatest Hits. Unfortunately, this has the remixes of the 70s song, like Tush and LaGrange. So those shitty versions are on here. But everything else is pretty cool. I mean, this is a great overview of their 80s hits, at least. I mean, it has all the Eliminator hits, and it has the um, uh, Afterburner hits and all that. My Heads in Mississippi's on here, and they do uh, Viva Las Vegas for some reason on here. The fun thing about this, though, is uh, there's two versions of the cover. I always got to tell you about the cover uh, alternates. Uh, this one I have is the first issue, and it is, as you can see, the microphone is placed here. Later on, the microphone is placed down here, and it's just the wire over there. Because if you can see this, what this basically says is ZZ Top's greatest tits. Yes, that's what that's supposed to be. ZZ Top's greatest tits. The, uh, the placement of that microphone is not an accident. It's the same way here on the actual disc. And like I said, later releases, they uh, they figured out, somebody figured out, sneaky, somebody's sneaking around, we got to change that microphone. I don't know why. I mean, who's going to be like, I'm not buying that? But uh, yeah, greatest the greatest tits from ZZ Top. What other band would do that? Okay, ZZ Top, um, oh wait, I'm missing one. Antenna came out in 94. Um, the thing about Antenna was that was uh, right when grunge was huge. Uh, it was starting to wane a little bit. But it was still really big. And I think everybody was kind of waiting for the next big sound to come along. Uh, and it wasn't going to be ZZ Top. That's the thing. So ZZ Top changes record labels. They are now with RCA. RCA, I don't think, did a whole lot to promote this. But it does have a great, uh, fun song on there called Pin Cushion. Uh, got a weird song on there, Cover Your Rig, about wearing a condom. It's like, I don't know if ZZ Top needs to go there. But, uh, you know, just some fun stuff on here. It's a lot better than I remembered it. I just listened to it again, and uh, it is fun. I mean, you're never going to put on a ZZ Top album and not, not hear some fun. Uh, does it compare to their earlier stuff? No, but, uh, you know, it's it's a great listen. It's fun. Like I said, Pin Cushion kicks it off. That's a fun song. Uh, all kinds of great little things on there. Uh, they try a few little different things, but they don't stray too much. And they're completely done at this point with that uh, computerized uh, synth sound. And they're more just basically doing a, a basic rock and roll sound at this point. Basic like 90s rock, like a Black Crows almost, or some kind of a basic rock thing like that. Like it would be sound produced in the 90s. That's Antenna. And of course, Antenna Head, they start off with, you know, they got to have their head reference in here <laughs> somewhere. In every, you go to the Pharaohs and check out some head. And you got Antenna Head. I think there's some head on here too somewhere. Somebody's got a head. Rhythm means their next one. Uh, a little bit more of a, they go back to the drum loops a little bit in this one for a little bit more of a contemporary sound. Some of it even sounds like slowed down New Jack Swing. So they try some things on here. Some of it works, some of it not so well. But like I said, Pincushion's a fun song. Bang, bang, my shangling. It's like, here's the part where the lyrics, I think the guess like, okay, guys, let's, let's keep swinging for the fences. Bang, bang, my shangling. I never was a big fan of that. But there's a song on here from the vampire movie, uh, from Dust Till Dawn, She's Just Killing Me. And uh, I think it's great. It's The lyrics are really basic, but I just think it's got a great rock sound. It's got a great groove to it, and I love the drums in it. And there's this remix version, if you can find it, that's really cool. The uh, Radio Rock Radio remix of She's Just Killing Me. The drums are even brighter in this. They really bring them out, and it just rocks. I love that song to this day, and it's another one that's kind of been, you know, a little bit forgotten about. Uh, Pretty Head. Gotta have, like I said, gotta have the head song. It's on here, too. Um, and just a zipper job, just a lot of double entendre stuff again. Like I, like I said, you kind of know what to expect from ZZ Top at this point. And this is what they came out with. Rhythm Mean, got a little promotional item that went with this, with uh, their What's Up With That song. What's up with that? They were doing that before the Saturday Night Live thing. So a little bit ahead of their time. This little uh, promo thing here features What's Up With That, two different versions of that. Stop Breaking Down Blues and Nasty Dogs and Funky Kings in a live version so a little promo release there from uh, zz top as well here is a great way to introduce yourself to zz top on cd they have uh, a big box set that folds out into a big like building thing uh called chrome uh, smoke and barbecue multi-disc set awesome for zz top fans if you can't afford that don't want to splurge on something like that just want a nice two disc thing it doesn't really get much better than rancho deluxe uh this has pretty much everything you would want on it uh, from their early stuff, their 80s stuff, a couple of special mixes. It's got the single mix of Legs, which is the one that's in the video that probably heard on the radio all the time. Uh, 12-inch mix of Velcro Fly, because that needed to be longer. Uh, but yeah, ZZ Top Rancho Deluxe. Excellent two-disc set. And the best part is, 
the 70s stuff is the original uh, album mixes. And so uh, it's an excellent listen and a great introduction to ZZ Top. They've got a new one, too, called ZZ Top 50 that is basically the same concept. I think it's two discs. But instead of in chronological order, the songs are, I think, in popularity order. So it starts off with, like, Shark Dress Man. So if you just want hits, 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 that might be the, uh, the better one, the new one called ZZ Top 50. All right, that brings us to the 1999 release, Triple X. Or maybe that's 30 or 3X. Uh, from ZZ Top, uh, celebrating, I guess, uh, about 30 years together at this point. And, uh, yeah, no pictures of the guys on here either. I don't even think this has ever even been uh, released on vinyl. I know Antenna had, like, one pressing, and that's super uh, collectible. But, yeah, if you're a vinyl collector, hard to find some of these later uh, ZZ Top releases like this. Now, this one, they're basically back to just, you know, it even says on here, uh, bass, drums, and a fuzzy guitar. So that's their sound on this again, kind of back to basics. But real basic lyrics, some of their like double entendre st stuff starting to wear a little thin. Poke, poke chop sandwich, uh, 36, uh, 22, 36, uh, a beat box. Come on, I like to beat my beat box. It's like, mm, yeah, I don't know about all that. But it it's not where I would start if you're going to start your ZZ Top collection. Triple uh, X pretty much been uh, kind of forgotten about at this point. Which is too bad, there's a, there's a kind of cool live section on here. They did a hybrid album for the first time since Fandango, which there's a live part on it. And, uh, well, they do do a live version of Let Me Be Your Teddy Bear. You know, they did Jailhouse Rock on Fandango. Why not? But, yeah, Triple X, not a bad, horrible album, but definitely not uh, ZZ Top's best. Now, they are still on RCA for 2002's Mescalero. Now, that is uh, an album that, I guess, had been like three years, so not too long since they put out a release, but it seemed like... Seemed like they'd been not been around for a while when this came out, I remember. But uh, Two Ways to Play, great catchy song. I think it's the second track on there. Always like that song. It's got a few good songs on here. It's got a lot of songs on here. That's the deal. It's like a, one of those typical 2002 releases where it just goes on and on and on. And sure, you can stop it whenever you want, but I'd rather them have a smaller album that is, is more concentrated on making quality instead of what sounds to me like a whole lot of filler on here. Uh, songs like Me So Stupid, I mean, or Me So Dumb or whatever, just uh, awful, awful songs. Uh, but there's good stuff on here. They give, uh, they give uh, Frank Beard a vocal, and that sounds pretty different, pretty cool. They did that a couple of times on some earlier albums. Uh, a little bit of sludge rock going on on here. Again, they bring back that sound, kind of different for ZZ Top. Even stoner rock kind of sounds on here. Uh, a song about being buck naked. I don't know if we need that from ZZ Top at this point. I like being buck naked. Come on. It's like, I don't want to think about ZZ Top buck naked. But that would be funny if they had the, if they had the beards, you know, everywhere. That would, or no, Frank Beard has one and he just has the beard <laughs> down. Yeah, you know, that's not, but that would be cool if it was. That'd be like the greatest rock groupie secret of all time. The ZZ Top double beard. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, Mescalero. Again, not not the first go-to ZZ Top release, but fun in spots. There's just a couple of tracks you gotta you gotta kind of skip over for real. And it's like if they would have just done that to begin with, we'd have a, a nice, uh, more compact uh, release. And then finally, after ten years, uh, saw the release of La Futura, uh, produced by Rick Rubin. So now he's working with uh, ZZ Top. I mean, I don't know. Rick Rubin just started hanging out at record label buildings, and whenever some of these legendary artists get, like, canned off their label, he's he's right there to scoop them on up. I mean, it worked so well for him with uh, Johnny Cash. I noticed he tried that a few more times, and here he does it with uh, ZZ Top. Uh, good results. It wasn't uh, as, as, as Rick Rubin sounding as I expected. I expected a lot more compression and full-on turn everything way up. Uh, the vocals are kind of like that, similar to the Johnny Cash production on those vocals, where you can just almost hear every little groan and every little thing going on in the throat and everything with an older man at this point. So it does kind of have that sound, but the instruments are nice and clear. It's got nice dynamics to it, and the songs are pretty much straightforward basic. There's not a lot of clowning around on this one. It's pretty much straightforward. Uh, ZZ Top starts off with a song called I Gots to Get Paid. Uh, you got uh, slower ballads in there, Blue uh, Heartache, and... Um, just all kinds of fun stuff. It's it's a ba basic, it's more like Antenna, a basic straightforward, or or even Recycler, a basic uh, straightforward uh, rock album for ZZ Top, and a little bit tighter, thankfully, than the uh, Mescalero that came uh, 10 years before. And that wraps up ZZ Top's uh, discography. I hope you enjoyed the video. I definitely enjoyed uh, uh, remembering some of these great songs. I want to just go and listen to all this stuff now. I, I was checking some of it out before, like getting reacquainted, like I said, with Antenna and some of the later stuff. And 
so much good stuff hidden on some of those later ones, but those early albums just all the way through, just incredible. I know the first two releases didn't even get that great of reviews when they were first out. You can still look up some of the Rolling Stone reviews or whatever, kind of like lukewarm or even negative. And <laughs> no way, these are great albums, and uh, they just keep getting better. And uh, I think, like I said, Eliminator for me, I was I was 10 years old, so that was my introduction. And then immediately after that, getting into the uh, really old stuff. So... ZZ Top, sad to hear about the passing of bassist uh, Dusty Hill. I hear he's going to be uh, replaced if they continue touring with the uh, get his guitar tech for his long-time guitar tech, Elwood. So that'll be interesting. Uh, but uh, we'll see if they keep putting out releases. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed it so you can catch uh, future videos as soon as I make them. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, uh, maybe consider just uh, you know moving on with your day. Uh, thanks again for watching.